Both Transmission, from October 28, 1997. We speak to you now of Osiris Rim Nebkit. Osiris Rim Nebkit is an abwit, an energy vessel created by Osiris and the priests and priestesses of Kefum Ra in the days of Egyptos before the deluge. In the temple of Kefum Ra, so the priests and priestesses entered the halls of Amenti and beseeched the Lord Immortals to create with them an abwit which would serve to initiate sunborn throughout the ages, long after their time as guardians of the solar threshold had passed. Thus was Osiris Rim Nipkin created through the portal of the great Osiris and into the vault of Osiris in the temple of the Risen One. Like his host Osiris, he is the Black Lord, his skin is a brilliant blue-black, his eyes are a sapphire, his hair a dark auburn. In the center of Osiris Rem Nebkit's chest is a diamond-shaped crystal appearing like unto a star of blue fire. This is the Kether Ah, the binding stone, that which is the master control for the Osiris grid between the earth and Orion, encompassing the earth as a member of Orion, enabling it to cross the solar threshold during LP40 and return to its true star sun. Osiris contains the master program for the bonding of the greater star fields to the lesser through the threshold of Orion. As his projection is brought through a series of stellar apexes, so it creates the vesica the eye of his son of son of sons, Horus, in the central whirl, which is the eye of his son, so realms are created from the core and the alm, that's K-O-R and A-L-M. These realms include not only star systems and biophysical forms, but realms within the heart and soul, given as solar emblems of light formation, overlaid upon the zodiacal charting of the Adam Kenmon memory within the current human form. Let us pause for a moment and reflect upon what I just read. A lot is being said there, and I'm not going to take a long time with it because it could take a long time. <laughs> but in essence, the being of Cyrus with his priests created sort of a, an energy duplicative of himself, not the, the soul, but a patterning, like a geometric pattern that represented him. And that pattern could, visual, could be visually imprinted as a duplicate of his form, only it would have slight differences. It would be even more impressive, <laughs> for one thing, and it would have this this field within the chest that reflected as this star. Now, why did he do this? Why couldn't he just be there for everyone in initiation at any time he chose? Obviously, a highly evolved being like Thoth. Well, not even Thoth can appear to me or anyone on this planet, boom, just here he is, he walks through the door. Because the energy between the time he incarnated last on this planet and the time now is so completely different and his being is so vast that probably people would just drop dead <laughs> when they saw him or if not that they would be completely disassembled you know so he, and he would not even be able to do it. He would not be able to do it because the, it's like a conflict of world energies. This full light Metatron being entering a half light or a tron spectrum? Uh-uh, don't think so. So um, that's why, you know, even in my vision state, I mean, in my in my inner eye, I can see him. You know, I can see him in my, I can form this image of him from the energy I'm feeling from him. But whereas with the ultra beings that came before him, they would appear in my room. My mother and I could see them together, you know, things like that. Well, 
that's never happened with folks. I saw his hand once, and I saw a green emerald light flashing that I knew was him once. Not flashing, but kind of flickering. And that's the only way I've ever seen him. Because it's just, this being is so highly present in the universe. And it's the same thing with Osiris. So Osiris created for initiation purposes this alt, this this uh, alternate avatar. <laughs> and it's very powerful. And you have to be on a certain frequency to even see that, for sure. But it performs the function that is necessary. It, it, is, it is enabled to appear to those initiate at the time and perform that function. Whereas Osiris would have more difficulty doing that as a soul being. He rays through it. He directs it. His consciousness is involved with it, entangled with it, if you will. But it serves a function of its own. And it is and is enabled to do so even for persons who are in other time zones and other timelines. It has that particular quality. And so when it speaks of the Kether Ah, the binding stone, which is the master control for the Osiris grid. This is obviously a vast universal field, but it's being located in an energy form within the body of this alt of Osiris. He mentions many various dynamics here that are all universal in nature. And so now we continue with the transmission. The 14 Osirian staffs in their pure energy form are spiraling yod flames of pure light raying forth. These yod rays are created through the interlinking of all seven solar crosses. The interlinking of all solar crosses occurs as a result of a high-level sentient source, i.e. the universal hierarchy, for better lack of a name, threading a beam of collective synchronicity through the seven crosses. From the Earth's current perspective, this is fully realized when this dynamic is initiated within the Earth's central sun atoma and then threaded through all the other domains of access to the greater radiant heaven, and then back again to the central sun atoma of the planet. In creating this loop, the yod flame staffs move through each of these domains and penetrate them, thereby anchoring the 14 permutations of return to light into those fields or domains as a means to reorient them to source. Now, before we move into the second video, which is going to be an activation with the 14 Assyrian staffs, let us look at how Osiris Remnebkit relates to the solar crosses and thus the 14 Assyrian staffs. This alt of Osiris has been embedded with the whole field of access that the, the solar crosses and, the, and thus the Assyrian staffs work within. So you have a whole system that's been brought into a continuity that can be accessed by human beings on this planet. Now, up until this time, those was only ones that could access it were human beings that were, well, almost not. <laughs> you know, they were highly evolved. But now is coming a time 
when more human beings will be able to access it without being so highly evolved. Certainly they will have to have a certain awareness and presence. But I'm speaking about you and me, that we have the potential on some levels and eventually more and more levels to access this program of light that was installed by Osiris and his priestesses those eons ago. And so let us begin.